In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me, is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. I've always wondered why we celebrate such a gloomy feast day in the festive season of Christmas. I mean, yesterday it's all about Jesus being born and mangers and oxen and cattle and stars and all these fun things. We shared our gifts with each other. We ate festive foods and stuffed ourselves. We warm, wore warm socks even though it was a thousand degrees outside. It was a joyful festive Friday and Saturday. Now we're brought down Eeyore style into the feast of St. Stephen. The stoning of Stephen, the first martyr after the resurrection and ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Why celebrate it now on the second day of Christmas? Why not celebrate it maybe right after Pentecost? Because that's when it comes in the Acts of the Apostles. Why not celebrate it during Holy Week when we're focused on the passion of Christ, his death, his wounds, the suffering of Jesus? Why do it now when we're supposed to be festive and joyful? Well, it only makes sense to do it now when we get with it what death is. For we have from our ancient fathers that blessed quote concerning St. Stephen that says, Yesterday, Christ was born in the world so that today Stephen would be born in heaven. So I say this to you. If you own a treasury of daily prayer, you should read it. If you don't have a treasury of daily prayer, you should get one or buy one and... Read it, because that was in the quotes this morning. I didn't find this this morning. I looked at it earlier. But the reality is you have that in this blessed gift that in Christ, death is defeated. Jesus being born in this world means that you and I have heavenly births, that God dwelt amongst men, was born in the midst of man, now means that man is born in the presence of God, that we are now in Christ, eternal beings, that in Christ we have no death, for death in Christ is defeated. His death destroys death. His resurrection seals that victory. As St. Paul Gerhard wrote and sang, death in Christ is now the portal to life immortal, the rescue from the strife of this life to his joy immortal. That's what it is for you and for I. We are not temporal creatures only. We are heaven-bound saints. That is why we celebrate the feast of St. Stephen on the second day of Christmas. For remember, Jesus himself gave us that prophecy that St. Stephen would fulfill when he said, Jerusalem, oh, I have sent them to you. You who need to escape from hell. That's what it said in the verse prior to our verse for today. You who need to escape hell on account of this. I send you the prophets and the scribes and the wise men. And you will, not you have, but you will kill them and crucify them. You will flog them and murder them. You will chase them from town to town and give them no rest. And St. Stephen fulfilled this prophecy when he preached till his last breath, seeing heaven open to him as he forgave those who cast the stones at him, preaching Christ and him crucified for the salvation of all. For Stephen was saved. Stephen was rescued. I've heard many times the lives of the saints preached as mere example. Be brave, like Stephen was brave. And bravery is usually said, it's, it's bravery if you're scared and instead make the choice to face what fears you. That's bravery. And therefore it's a choice. I remember when I was confirmed, my church gave me It's Time to Be Bold and Brave by Michael W. Smith. So early when I said buy a treasury, if you find that book, don't buy it, hide it. 
No one should ever read that stuff. It's not about you making some choice to be brave today, like Stephen made some choice, even though there was lots to be afraid of, like death and hell and Satan and the world and persecution and a bad reputation and being harmed physically before death, all that stuff. All of this was taken away for Stephen. A fool for Christ because in Christ now death is no threat for him. Death is but a short nap, falling asleep as he awaits the day of the resurrection. He is a heaven-bound saint, one who is pure in Christ. Therefore, he could preach and be brave, not by choice, but because he was crowned with righteousness in the forgiveness of his sins and adorned with the garland of everlasting life in his holy death, heaven was not some far-off destination that Stephen one day wished to see and enter into. No, heaven was brought close to him in the incarnation, life-suffering, death and resurrection of his Savior, Jesus Christ. And therefore, he could preach in the midst of suffering, in the midst of certain death, because death was no more for him. And that is why we celebrate his feast day on this second day of Christmas, celebrating because we suffer as well. We follow in the train of Jesus and Stephen, preaching the truth of the gospel in a world that despises us, that hates us, that doesn't get us, that is irritated by us, we preach. And yet we still fail. We succumb. Rather than remembering that we are heaven-bound saints, we return to live in the desires of the world. So may the Holy Spirit give you a neck adjustment this day for that stiff neck. May you be adjusted in the words of repentance by pastor or a friend or even a foe. Whoever the messenger is that Jesus sends to you, it's the same Jesus that sends them to proclaim to you That yes, we are weak. Yes, we do fail. Yes, we do need Christ. And may you be swift to repent, swift to be forgiven, and be nourished in the strength that comes only in knowing that you are crowned with the righteousness of Christ that was purchased by his crown of thorns. That you may be strengthened to suffer in this life because the devil, the world, and sinful flesh don't get you. You are inconceivable to the devil and he cuts the rope to watch you fall to your death. But thanks be to God he does because death is nothing for us. Let the rope be cut. Let death come our way. Let the stones fly as often as they will, for death is nothing in us, for Jesus himself has not remained dead, but is risen. Death is not the end for Christ, therefore it is not the end for you. For in Christ, you are eternal in Christ, You are immortal in Christ. You will have many more Christmases, many more Easter's, and many more days in between. I'm caring for one of our saints right now who is looking at her last days on this earth. But how do people speak then about her while she has her last days here? Is this will be her last Christmas, her last this, her last that. Have you ever ran into a kid that went off to college after their first semester? What are they? Stupid. They are the dumbest kids you've ever met. Why? Because you raised them every day of their life and sent them away at 18 to listen to some liberal about what life is now. And they come back talking nonsense. And you ask them what? What do you say to this kid? Who taught you this? Where did you learn to speak like this? Where did you learn this stuff? And it's the same thing for us. Where did we learn to talk temporarily about our life? Where did we learn to talk about last things for us? Is this what Jesus says or is this the way of the world? A very worldly way to be. No, there are no lasts for you. There is eternal things for you. Death is not gloomy. Death is a homecoming. Death is a celebration. Death is release from this valley of sorrow being taken by Jesus himself unto heaven. Death is a day to rejoice. 
So when the dead, when they are gone, we don't do some celebration of this temporal life. We celebrate the reality that they are in life that has no end. And that is why we celebrate this day, my friends. For that's the weird part about the early church. They didn't celebrate birthdays. They celebrated death days because that was the heavenly birth. And that is why we celebrate this day as well. Because death is not gloomy. Death is not the end for Jesus and it is not the end for you. Rather, death is but a short siesta, a little nap in which we await for our bodies to be raised eternal and welcomed unto the new heavens and the new earth. So be at peace, my friends. For just as Stephen was crowned with the righteousness of Christ, so are you crowned with the garland of his holiness. Be at peace. You are Christ and he is yours. You are eternal. And death is no more a threat for you. It is nothing but a nap unto the heavenly dwellings. In Jesus' name, amen.